What's up? Happy Monday. Good morning. We get another week for building the lives and the careers that we want. And I'm very excited about this week. What we're going to talk about is how the ultra successful build their minds. Now you might think build your mind. What, what does that even mean? Uh, there's six different levels that we're going to talk about that these people who are not just successful. I mean, they're not just, you don't see them go, oh yeah, that person. I mean, you see these people, and you, go, like, you know, these people's names, these people are different. They hit different. And they're the top of whatever it is that they do. They're the top of their industry. Uh, they're the top in business or in philanthropy or in sports or in medicine or in politics. Like these people have built themselves differently mentally. And so what, what I'm gonna walk you through is what are these different levels of building the mind that these people have mastered, but even more importantly is not understanding just the six steps, but how they use that strategically for the discipline that they're focused in, whatever whatever their uh, career trajectory or their, or their direction is professionally. So I'm excited, let's get into it. All right, so as I mentioned in the intro, there's six different levels that these people build their minds to become ultra successful. So as you can see, we're gonna be going through, we're gonna start at level one and build up through level six. So the very first level is philosophy. So the people who are ultra successful, they have a different philosophy. Now when I say philosophy, I don't mean that they're just reading philosophy. Uh, they're not just reading Socrates, Aristotle, Marcus Aurelius, uh, or any of the other, you know, famous Greek or Roman or mid-century or like any of those philosophers. I mean, they might have, but when we think about philosophy, a lot of people immediately think of like this academic version of philosophy. Like I'm reading a book and, and debating life. Well, debating life is a part of your philosophy, but think of your philosophy as how do you see the world? How do you think about things? Imagine philosophy as me and the world, me and reality. How do I perceive reality? How do I think about my life? How do I think about what's possible? How do I think about my education, love, relationships? It's, it's our thoughts, it's our beliefs, it's our values about the world. And when you look at people, I'll give you an example. If I were to ask you, will you be worth $10 million when you die? And instantly you have a gut reaction, either yes or no, or oh my Lord, that's a lot of money. Or maybe some of you are like, oh, absolutely no doubt. I mean, it's however you just responded to that question is a part of your philosophy. What do you believe about yourself, about the world, about other people, about the marketplace, about health, about finances, about everything? How you perceive the world is your philosophy. And if you talk, to, I mean, think of someone like an Elon Musk. Most people, when they, when they watch those interviews and they hear what he says, they're like, a lot of people are like, this guy's crazy. What? What does he mean? Or they, they watch other interviews of other incredibly successful people and they're like, why do they do that? Like, that's crazy. And it's people who hit the highest level, they got there for a reason. They believe different things. They see the world differently. They perceive things differently. And so if we want to get to an ultra high success level in whatever, I mean, think of uh, sports, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, like there was a linear progression of learning. So Michael Jordan learned from Larry Bird and a lot of the other greats before him, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And then after Michael Jordan, then there was Kobe Bryant. Well, Michael Jordan was Kobe Bryant's role model. And then after Kobe Bryant, there LeBron James, you know, studied both of them and everyone before them. So it's like, when you look at these ultra successful people, all of them had a role model or all of them had mentors that they studied either from afar or they were privileged enough or had the opportunity to actually interact with those people. But it was by being surrounded by those mentors, by those people that you, they literally downloaded and consumed and transformed how they think about themselves, the world, what's possible, what's realistic, what's unrealistic, um, everything, and they started changing their mindset. So when someone says mindset, I really think that philosophy, like your perception of the world and yourself is, that's your mindset. And so people who are ultra successful, this is where they started. If you wanna change your life, it's not about these other five levels that I'll be walking through. Like if you wanna change your mindset, if you wanna change your life, your career, your finances, your health, uh, anything that's important to you, it has to start here. It has to start with how you think about things. 
And there's a million people that quote it from Buddha to Jesus to Marcus Aurelius to all the other philosophers and the greats. And then you have the modern day presidents, but it's, you have people that say what you think about, you become what you believe you become all they're saying, these hundreds of people that have massively influenced society over the last two to 3000 years. What they're talking about is this, what you truly believe, what you think about, you will become because this forms your reality. So this is level one and that must come first. Whatever problem you have in your life, how you think about the problem is going to affect what you do about it. There's a lot of people that say, oh, I can't afford that or I'll never be able to do that. Well, you're right with that mindset. Absolutely. And that's a cliche. We've all heard that before, but a lot of people don't take that literally. If you think that you can't do something, you absolutely never will. Your mind turns off. When you say I can't, I won't, or anything that's, a, that's a, an affirmed negative like that, your brain literally turns off and stops trying to problem solve. But if someone were to say, I can't afford that, I can't do that, and you were to say, well, how could you? When you ask that question, how? Automatically, the brain starts turning on again. And they start thinking, oh, well, I don't know. Oh, God, I don't know. And, but what they're doing is their brain is searching for answers. And if we can consistently have a philosophy where we train ourselves to ask, how, how can I, how can I, how can I, your brain will constantly be searching for answers. You're going to read, you're going to talk to people, you're going to network, you're going to research online, you're going to, you will do something to figure it out. So if you have a problem in your life, the absolute first place you want to check is philosophy. And if you don't have what you want in your life, the very first place we need to work on is philosophy. So none of this stuff matters. Everything after philosophy is worthless. If you have a mindset or a philosophy that something is not possible, it's unrealistic, it's impossible. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not good looking enough. I'm not whatever enough. If you have beliefs and if you perceive what's real for you and the world and it's a negative, everything else is a waste of time. So this is where the ultra successful people start. They think and perceive the world differently. Their philosophy is completely different from the average person. So now the second part, think of it as level two. What? what kind of put that line there? All right. So level two is psychology. So you have philosophy first, which is you and the world, how you perceive yourself in the world. No one else included. Level two is psychology. How do you interact and perceive other people? So the level two is working with other people, understanding other people, understanding their emotions, understanding their patterns, understanding how to work with other people, understanding how to influence, negotiate, uh, negotiate, persuade, sell market. Like when you understand and think of who are the, who are the people who are paid the most in the world? They're usually the ones who are either extremely creative, but also know how to influence other people. So leaders, if you think of presidents, if you think of CEOs, if you think of spiritual leaders, if you think of the world leading philanthropists, if you like all of those people, their primary responsibility is leading other people. Well, in order to lead other people, you have to be able to influence them. You have to be able to change their mind about what is and is not possible. You have to motivate them to want to do certain things and not do other things. So when you think about transforming your life, the very first thing is yourself. But the next thing is you need to learn how to interact with other people. Who are the people that move from individual contributors in the career and the workforce? Who are the people that move from individual contributors and doing work themselves to eventually team leaders? Well, the team leaders are the people who are best with other people, managing other people. Well, who are the team leaders that then get promoted to middle management and middle line leaders? Whether it's a senior manager or if it's a, 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 head, a head manager or if it's a director or if it's senior director or like any, any of the middle management, well, it's again, who is best with people? Who can manage people the best? Who can understand people the best? And as well, I mean, they have to be excellent at what they do, whatever their actual responsibilities job-wise are, but a big part of their responsibility is working with people, understanding and mastering their relationships with other people. So then the ultra successful, not only do they know how to lead and influence and negotiate and, and, and motivate and, and work with other people. After that, they also have knowledge. 
And this knowledge is usually interdisciplinary. So, and that's where, whether you call them polyglots or whatever, but, um, so Google actually talks about a T-shaped knowledge framework or a T-shaped skill set. So when you think about knowledge, you can think of it as these people have what is called a T-shaped skill set. So this is their expertise. So where it goes deep, that is, it might be one or two specific things, but they are absolute masters at whatever these skill sets are, these knowledge areas are. And then they have a broad understanding of how that their expertise connects to everything else. So you might have someone who starts off their career in, let's say, uh, marketing. So they build and build and build through their, their career through marketing. So they become an expert in all things marketing. Well, eventually they're going to hit a point where they have to begin to understand other parts of the business, other parts of the organization. Um, and so that's where they need an understanding of sales, of operations, of negotiation, of the, the finance and accounting. They're going to have to understand strategic partnerships. They're like, they need to begin to build out these other understanding points because that is going to be their knowledge. This is where creativity, this is where creativity lies. So creativity is the creation of value, but then you have to have the distribution of value, which is your ability to work and influence other people. So you can see that the two basic, the, the, the two most valuable things in the marketplace, creativity and innovation, as well as influence and, and value distribution, getting other people to buy, to take action, to do something, those are the two basis, th those are the two bases of their minds. So then after they have knowledge and they, they invest in themselves over decades. So, and that's the other important thing is we cannot, our brain does not learn something instantaneously. And so when someone says, oh, I'm a master after three months, then that's probably not knowledge. It might be a skill. And that's what we're going to talk about in terms of level four is you have skills. You can learn a skill very quickly. So for example, let's say you're, uh, an engineer, an engineer. So engineering, there's a reason it's a four year degree and it's a very difficult degree because you have to learn an enormous amount. You have to learn math. You have to learn physics. You have to learn all sorts of other disciplines that form the field or the knowledge base for engineering. But then you might be able to learn a skill, which is a very specific part of something. So that's going to be the fourth level is these skills depend on the knowledge because if you don't understand, like for example, um, let's use marketing again as an example. So you might become a master at marketing. You have a deep understanding of marketing of the, I mean, literally the strategy behind marketing, but then a skill could be something specific like social media. Well, that's a very specific skill set within marketing. There's a lot of other parts of marketing that, that we need to understand if you're in marketing. So skills always go on top of knowledge and the skills are dependent on knowledge because you cannot learn a skill if you don't understand it in the first place. So after skills come tools. Cool. So once you have knowledge of something, you understand it and you then begin to develop skill sets within that field or within that knowledge area and you begin to actually do something, well then tools are what make it more efficient. So let's use you know, a throwback, you know, forever human being uh, ex example here. So farming, agriculture, like literally growing plants in the ground to eat them. Well, philosophy, you have to understand how, you know, you have to believe that you can do it, that it's possible, that it's a real thing and have the mindset that, okay, if I'm gonna grow, I can grow. All right, well then the psychology is, okay, well, who are the other people that I need influence in order to actually do this? I'm gonna have to understand farmers. I'm gonna have to understand the markets. I'm gonna have to understand, who would I buy from? Who would I buy the seeds and all this from? Who would I get the financing from? And then who am I gonna be selling to? Where, well, what are my distribution channels? Well, then there's gonna be knowledge. Well, you have to actually know how to farm. 
Uh, or if you don't want to do the farming, well, then you're going to need to go influence someone who does know how to join you in the venture. But let's assume that you're going to be the farmer. Well, you then need to learn how to farm. You're going to have to learn all the, t I mean, literally just all the things that are required. All right, what kind of seeds? How do I, how do I plow the fields? How do I get everything? I mean, clearly I don't know it. That's why I'm, you know, tough example here. Um, but you have to learn how to farm. And then you have to actually know the skills, how to actually do everything. So think of knowledge as your understanding of understanding of the thing. Skills are actually doing the thing, actually the, the ability to take action on something. But then tools are what make it more efficient. So that's where you add improved, um, improved tractors, improved tools, improved um, attachments and gadgets and, and the systems, the conveyor belts for uh, the manufacturing part of it. Like, Tools make things faster, but then you have techniques. Let's see if I can fit that in there. Techniques, yep, cool. So once you have tools, then on top of that is how do you maximize the usage of the tool? So techniques would be, there's a lot of different techniques in farming. Um, and again, I don't know why I use that example, but let's try going back to the marketing. CRMs, so customer relationship management systems. Well, a CRM is a tool. In order to use the tool, you have to first understand the different skills that that, that even relates to. You have your email marketing, you have your social media marketing, you have your um, pipeline management for both sales, you have all of the assets and the creative assets that you're creating for the campaigns. So you have all these skills that you need to know. But in order to do all those things, you have to understand the knowledge. You have to understand what are we doing in the first place? How do all these things integrate? So the CRM is the tool. How you use the CRM, there's all sorts of different techniques and everybody can do things different ways. Now, some techniques are gonna be a lot more profitable, a lot more successful, a lot more efficient than other techniques. So think of whatever it is that you do professionally begin to see your entire career, your entire life, as you're stacking these different things in your life. So your philosophy, this is like life. This is your entire life. You have a philosophy that affects every single thing in your life. We, we only have one mindset. But then on top of that mindset, we have a psychology, which is our interaction with people. And again, that is, that's, that affects everything. It's, it, it transcends all areas of our life. Now, these two arguably are the single most important because they affect everything in our life. Now, where things begin to focus and, differ, and where we begin to differentiate ourselves from other people professionally is these four levels. And this must come first, after that come skills, and then tools, and then techniques. So whatever it is that you want, whatever your focus is professionally, the very first thing you need to focus on are these base two, but then you need to begin asking yourself, have I mastered my knowledge? Whatever it is that I do professionally, have I mastered it? And if you haven't mastered it, that's the first thing you need to master. You need to build that expertise. But after you've built this expertise of knowledge, then the next thing that you want to do is, well, and also within this expertise, you're going to want to also become extremely talented at the skills, the tools, and the techniques within here. But then, this is where the ultra successful begin massively differentiating and pulling ahead of the pack. I mean, they're miles ahead of everybody. What they do is they don't just do this for one knowledge set. They do this for two or three or four. And so they'll literally take this T shape and they start building out deep channels within other areas. And just as an example, if you look at someone like Elon Musk, he's mastered business. He's mastered engineering. He's mastered physics. He's like, he had, he's mastered the technology space. He's like, you look at all of the different channels where it's, he's not just good. I mean, he is a leader. He has mastered these spaces. So he has three, four, five, six of these massively deep areas of expertise these knowledge bases that have been built with all of these three on top of them. And what that allows these people to do, these ultra successful people to do is they begin cross pollinating. So they might have, you know, let's say five areas of expertise. Most people just have one dot. 
But these people who, so think of the one dot as they have one dot, one dot of creativity. But when you have these people that start cross-pollinating these incredibly deep knowledge areas, these, these areas of expertise, what they do is they create all these different lines of creativity. And you can think of one line as a creative idea or a creative combination of different areas of expertise. Well, they start combining all of these. And, doo -doo -doo, yeah. So they start combining and you can see that they are significantly more creative and more innovative and they see opportunities vastly different from most other people. And it's because the cross-pollination of their areas of knowledge and it's built on a mindset that says, I can, I'm good enough, it's possible, I have the opportunity and they know how to work with people and they understand other human beings. So I hope you found this video extremely helpful and I hope it has you turning mentally about your life, your career, your opportunities within, within your, I mean, your, your career, your future, because it's not about the more successful you, a lot of people think that success is just about money. It's not about the money. What it's about is when you become more capable, you can add more value and the more value that you can add, the more that you can do the more you can contribute, the more you can contribute. Yes, you're going to make money, but you're actually going to make a bigger impact on your team, on your company, on the marketplace, in the world. Like the more that you can, the more developed you become, you can begin adding value to more people. So you'll be compensated for it, of course. And that's why if you look at all the people, like think of it as contribution. The more you contribute equals money. Now, most people believe that this is the goal. Like, oh, I, I just got to chase the money. I need to do whatever, you know, I got to get paid. And they do all these things just for the money. But what they fail to realize is that when you chase the money, like they're, they're chasing an end result. That doesn't make sense. You have to chase the thing and develop yourself to be able to contribute more value. Contribution of value. And the way to add more value is you have to actually build a mindset that allows you to think differently. If you think just like everyone else, you're gonna be adding the same amount of value. You're gonna be thinking just like everyone else. You have to be different. The moment you're just like everyone else, that's when you're gonna get the exact same results as everyone else. So this week, I challenge you, begin thinking about building this mindset and, and specifically psychology and philosophy wise, like what are your limiting beliefs? What do you believe that you, you've shut yourself down? You've created a ceiling. I'm not. I'm not good enough or I'm not smart enough or I'm not, you know, I will never be able to do X. Like the moment you have the, you've created those ceilings within your mind, you're, you're stuck. So check these. And then the next part is focusing on knowledge wise. What area of knowledge am I going to absolutely master first? Once you've chosen the knowledge area that you're going to master, then you want to start asking yourselves, what skills within that knowledge area do I need to master? And then what tools and then what techniques? Once you've mastered your first knowledge area and to master a knowledge area, it might take two years, three years, four years, five years. Like, and that's where people talk about the 10,000 hours. It takes a lot of time to master something. But once you've mastered one, then you want to get creative and start asking yourself, okay, what else? What comes next? What knowledge area would cross pollinate or go exceptionally well with my base knowledge area? So, all right. I know you got a lot to think about this week. Have an outstanding week and I will see you next Monday.